Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is another March Mystery Madness video. I have a great topic for today's video, but first I need to show you what I found that fit the previous round of the 2x2 mystery game. I needed to find a mystery that was a thriller and after 1970. And so I found Poacher's Road by John Brady. This was published in 2006, and it is an Inspector Kimmel novel set in uh, Austria. So there you have it. Stay tuned to the end of this video uh, for the next round of the 2x2 mystery game. This is the first in a another series of videos that I'm doing during March Mystery Madness that I'm calling Top 22 uh, in honor of 2x2 and 2022. And so for today's video, uh, I'm going to do the Top 22 Underrated Mysteries. Now, <laughs> a few qualifiers here. First of all, these are all books that I've read that I have rated between four and five stars. So these are all books that I really enjoy. And I have chosen these books based on the number of Goodreads ratings. So how many people have rated these books on Goodreads? That's how I am interpreting underrated for the purposes of this video. So, and I'm going to start with the, the most and uh, go down to the least number of rated um, ratings on Goodreads. So number one is Two Parts Bloody Murder by Jen J. Dan Dana. Dana. Um, to be honest, I didn't remember reading this book at all until I started looking into it a bit and then I had uh, some vague memory, but it sounded really good and um, uh, I'm, so I'm definitely going to dive into this series again. This only has 94 ratings on Goodreads. It is the fourth in the Abbott and Lowell Forensic Mystery Series, and it was written in 2015. It's a double surprise for Trooper Leigh Abbott as she investigates a cold case and discovers two murder victims in a historic 19th century building. Together with forensic anthropologist Matt Lowell and medical examiner Dr. Edward Rao, she uncovers the secrets of a long forgotten prohibition era speakeasy in the same building. But when the two victims are discovered to be relatives, their deaths separated by over 80 years, the case deepens and suddenly the speakeasy is revealed as ground zero for a cascade of crimes through the decades. Number two is The Merchant of Vengeance by Simon Hawk. This received only 86 ratings on Goodreads. It's the fourth in the Shakespeare and Smythe series and was published in 2003. Christopher Marlowe's The Jew of Malta is all the rage on the London stage, and the young bard wishes to rise to the competition. With companion Tuck at his side, Will makes a sojourn for research purposes into the Elizabethan underworld, where contracts are blood bonds and the quality of mercy is stretched to its very limits. He becomes embroiled in a tangle of unlucky young lovers, anti-Semitism, and rogue justice. Number three... Who Killed the Curate by Joan Coggins. This only received 85 ratings on Goodreads. It's the first of her Lady Lupin books and was published in 1944. Um, this comic detective novel is set at Christmas in 1937. When Lady Lupin turned her back on society life to marry the Vicar of Glanville, she didn't expect to have to turn detective. That was a really fun one. Uh, number four, Hearts of Darkness by Paul Lawrence. This received 76 ratings on Goodreads. It is the third Harry Little Chronicle and was published in 2014. 1666, London is recovering from the Great Plague, which has now slithered out of the city to breed elsewhere. The village of Shyam responds to the pestilence by closing its borders, allowing no one to leave until the disease has run its course. But this is where Harry Little and his reluctant colleague David Dowling are ordered to go, to track down a traitor or, and bring him out alive. Refusing Lord Arlington's demands is not an option, and following their every move is a merciless killer. 
The road to Cheyenne is long and dangerous, and the story that awaits them there will turn their world upside down. Number five, False Impression by Veronica Healy. This has 73 ratings on Goodreads. It is the ninth in her Abbott Agency series from 2014. The Abbott Agency handles domestic crises, so it's not technically, um, you know, like a private investigation agency or anything like that. B. Abbott's friend, Leon Holland, has asked for her help in establishing an alibi. But why would he need one? First, he tells her he had a narrow escape from being run down in the road, and then he was lured to a car park to meet someone who didn't turn up. Matters escalate when two bodies are found in the car park, stabbed to death. Then everything is thrown into chaos as a devastating virus infects the agency's systems. A hidden camera, hate mail, a nasty practical joke, it's clear that the Abbott agency has been targeted. But why? And where is it leading? B is about to find herself drawn into a vicious power struggle. Number six is Nightshade by M.L. Huey. This has 72 ratings. It's the second in his Livy Nash series from 2020. British spy Livy Nash has never had many friends, but fellow agent Margot Dupont was the exception to the rule, at least until she disappeared during one of their missions in World War II, never to be heard from again. But then the British pick up Margot's call sign, Nightshade, years after the war. Livy has her doubts. What if their enemies are using it to lure out Livy and her team? Despite her unease, Livy dives headlong into finding Margot, aided by her boss, the charming Ian Fleming. When evidence arises that a handsome Russian spy might have information about Margot, Liv agrees to her most dangerous mission yet, going undercover as a double agent to spy on the infamous Red Devil. Number seven, Vintage Mystery and Detective Stories by David Stewart Davies. He edited this collection. This is a collection of short stories and The Handsome Cab Mystery by Fergus Hume. Um, it is a fantastic collection. I just read this recently of vintage stories. And it only had 69 ratings on Goodreads. Number eight, The Opening Night Murders by James Scott Burnside. Um, this one has 68 ratings on Goodreads and was published in 2019. Chicago, 1935. The Great Depression has brought America to its knees and the people are dying for some entertainment. Luckily for them, a murder has been scheduled for opening night at the, Rising, the Red Rising Theater. When the lead actress receives a death threat, Detective Rowan Mannery and his partner Walter Williams agree to take the case. Neither realizes the curtain is rising on the deadliest and most vexing mystery of their career. There will be 200 witnesses in the seats and not a single suspect on the stage. Number nine, The Curious Incident at Claridge's by R.T. Rekev. This one has um, 63 ratings. It's the fifth in his Antonia Darcy and Major Payne series and published in 2010. Um, did the beautiful Lady Tris Trades Kant try to poison her elderly husband? If not, who did? There are no shortage of suspects. His eccentric twin sister, but Bettina, his disgruntled son Nicholas, his scheming daughter Olivia, Antonia Darcy and Hugh Payne receive, face one of their most baffling cases. Number 10, Called Back by Hugh Conway um, from 1885. This one has 60 ratings. A blind man stumbles across a murder. As he has not seen anything, the assassins let him go, but he finds it is impossible to walk away from murder. Number 11, A Cadenza for Caruso by Barbara Paul. This has 59 ratings, it was written in 1984. Enrico Caruso is an amateur detective during the tense premiere of The Girl of the Golden West at the Metropolitan Opera in New York in 1910. Death at One Blow by Henrietta Hamilton. This receives, only has 41 ratings. Sally and Johnny, it's the second Sally and Johnny Helder mystery and is, was published in 1957. 
Needing a break from summer in the city, Sally and Johnny leave J London for the countryside. Tasked with sorting out two jumbled personal libraries in a country estate, the couple are looking forward to a holiday break filled with books, fresh air, and reconnecting with longtime friend Sir Mark. But upon their arrival, the Heldares become privy to tensions within the house, and soon the pair find themselves at the center of another mystery. The figure in the photograph by Kellen, Kevin Sullivan. This it was published in 2020 and has 40 ratings. 1898, when Juan's father is killed while working as a photographer in Cuba, the young man is left with nothing but his last photos amid the chaos as the war between Spain and America escalates. But the images reveal a sinister truth to his father's last moments, and Juan soon realizes his death was no accident. The young man travels alone to Scotland to grieve with his surviving family and soon immerses himself in the study of photography and pioneers a new invention. When this technology inadvertently solves a crime, it is not long before the device draws the attention of local law enforcement and he is invited to Glasgow to assist police to hunt down a serial killer. Number 14, The Gripping Beast by Margot Wadley from 2001. This has 38 ratings and it's about Isabel Garth, who is a young American woman who goes to the Orkney Islands in order to um, illustrate her deceased father's notebook. Um, she encounters a, a beautiful young woman as soon as she steps off the ferry who tells her that she should leave and uh, she soon finds out that there are people who consider her uh, that woman a witch um, and uh, yeah it's, it's actually it's a really good one there's a lot of like really interesting things that, that go on number 15 perpetual check by F Nelson Smith from 2019. This one has 32 ratings. It's 1985 and to get away from her domineering mother, Danny Morden travels to England with her aunt Lucy. She anticipates a week of touring museums and being bored silly. What she gets is murder, espionage, and running from unknown killers who are convinced she has something they want. Number 16, Last Seen in Aberdeen by M. G. Kincaid from 2004. This has 24 ratings. Seth Mornay is an ex-Royal Marine detective sergeant. He is assigned the high-profile case of a young boy's disappearance, but his best efforts fail. The murdered, boy, the murdered boy's body is found not far from his home. While waiting through a list of evasive suspects, Mornay's own life threatens to come undone when his long-estranged father becomes a prime suspect in a heroin smuggling case. So yeah. Number 17, Acts of Faith by Patricia Wynn. This came um, out in 2014 and it's the fifth Blue Satan and Mrs. Keene mystery. This has 23 ratings on Goodreads. It's the summer of 1716. As King George celebrates victory over the Jacobite rebels, waiting woman Hester Keene is sent into Yorkshire to ready her cousin Mary for life at court. But her trip is soon disrupted by the religious conflicts still causing tensions. She befriends a fellow passenger on the stage, a neighbor of her cousin's, who turns out to be a Roman Catholic, coming home after receiving an illegal education in France. When they arrive to learn that his father has been murdered, Hester's efforts to help are stimmied by the secrecy under which Catholics are forced to live. To solve the murder, she must delve into the, into the practices Catholics used to shield themselves from the laws and the neighbors who would do them harm. Number 18, Truth Will Out by Pamela Oldfield from 2009. This has 20 ratings. Folkestone, 1921. Newlywed Maud Brent couldn't be happier. She'd like it if her husband Lionel wasn't quite so overprotective, but as it's proof of his affection, she can't bring herself to mind. When her much-loved elderly housekeeper Aunt Biddy starts to grow forgetful, Lionel suggests that Maud hire a companion to take the load off her, and he knows just the girl. Initially reluctant, Maud trails, trials the young and bubbly Alice, and soon it's as if she'd always been part of the family. But when Lionel takes Maud on holiday to the seaside town of Hastings, tragedy strikes and he disappears. Number 19 is Follow the Toff by John Creasy. This has 20 ratings. 
It is the 44th in his Toph series and was published in 1961. In an unusual case, the Honorable Richard Rollison, aka the Toph, finds himself investigating a series of frauds in the art world of Paris, including the use of counterfeit currency. Not all is as it seems, however, and it is not long before the investigation widens to one of murder. The danger is obvious, but can the Toph overcome the difficulties and succeed where others might fail? 20. Blackstone and the Firebug by Alan Rustage. Um, this has 16 ratings. Um, it is the fourth in the Inspector Blackstone series and was set was written in 2005. It is set in Victorian England. If the firebug's true purpose is to make the government hand over 100,000 pounds, why does he seem so reluctant to apply the necessary pressure? Why does he content himself with burning down a single warehouse when he could set an entire wharf, Riverside Wharf, ablaze? And why firebomb a single sloop? when it would have been just as easy to destroy the whole fleet. In order to answer these questions, Inspector Sam Blackstone, aided by Dr. Ellie Carr, a passionate disciple of the new science of criminal pathology, must follow a trail of death and destruction which will lead to the very center of government itself. Number 21, Tales of Detection and Mystery, uh, collected by Dorothy L. Sayers from 1961. This has six <laughs> ratings on Goodreads. It's 19 short stories which serve to show the development of the detective story during its first 100 years. And then 22 is A Thief in the Night by Thomas Walsh from 1962. This has two ratings on Goodreads and one of them is mine. <laughs> Eddie McNudy, A Congenital Loser particularly sore and hot-headed when his future father-in-law incriminates him in a jewel theft, is in jail when his older brother, a flyer, is brought down behind the Iron Curtain. Inveigling his way out of jail, Eddie also manages to kidnap a personage from the cons consulate and with his girl's help bargain for an even exchange in hostages to bring his brother back alive. So there you have it. That is my list of the top 22 underrated mysteries that I have read. What do you think of this list? Um, have you read any of these books? Um, I would love to chat with you in the comment section down below. And let's end this video with another round of the two by two mystery game. Okay, here we go. Here is the first roll of the dice. Four is type of detective. So we have professional or amateur. Roll number two. One. Type of mystery. We have a thriller or who done it. Okay. Here's the third roll. 5. 5 means roll again. to go with amateur for type of detective and whodunit for type of mystery. So I need to find a book that is a whodunit with an amateur detective, an amateur sleuth. Let me know in the comment section down below what you find for these categories in amateur sleuth whodunit and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.